Yo, Joe Phantom Maniacs, welcome to another needless unboxing brought to you by Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast, available the first Friday of every month wherever you find your podcasts, now on Anchor Podcasts. All right, so today we are taking a look at Flint from the G.I. Joe Classified series. I had Flint and Lady J pre-ordered from three different places uh, Hasbro, Pul no wait, I think it might have been Pulse, Big Bad Toy Store, and Amazon, uh, and then March 31st, GameStop showed that they were in stock, so I ordered from there, and as of April 30th, they were still waiting for inventory, so basically I like to you know make pre-orders and just wait, and wherever I get them first, I'll cancel the other pre-orders, and you know, maybe that doesn't seem, well, it is fair, because if you want my money, you better get the product first. And this time around, Walmart got my money because I walked into a Walmart and Flint and Lady J were right there on the shelf uh, as part of, it looked like two fresh cases of classified series figures. So I've got them here and we're going to open them up now. I've talked plenty about how much I like the Classified Series packaging. I think it looks great. Uh, it's got the hang tabs, so they can be on the pegs, or they can be just sitting on the shelf like they were in this Walmart. And I almost missed them because they were on the bottom shelf. Uh, I, I almost walked out of the store, and just the color uh, caught my... I'll go ahead and bring Lady J over here, too. If you couldn't guess, we're going to be reviewing Lady J on Wednesday. Uh but these colors caught my eye. I was like, wait, what is... Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe they were just sitting there. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at Flint with cool art on the side. I like the... I don't know. The face doesn't totally look like Flint. But at the same time, it's got a lot of personality and I like it. So it's not, it's not a problem. It's just... That's just not how Flint looks in my head. But I don't think it's a bad flint, if that makes sense. Uh, side of the box, again, I love how the window goes around the side here and we get the specialties. And I did something that I do not often do and I might not ever do again, but I actually went to GIJoe.com, which is where you can go to look up the specialties on all of these figures. And Flint's specialties are leader, light weapons, rotary wing pilot, and tactics. So there you go. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle. I'll tell you what else I know after going to gijoe.com is there are a ton of characters up on that website that they haven't gotten to yet. Uh, this line is just crawling out the shelves. Uh, so, well, even on the back of the box, uh, you can see the huge variety of characters. Uh, unfortunately, we now know what's going on with Major Blood, or he, he has been announced anyway. And, uh, you know, I can't say that I'm thrilled with another Cobra Island release, but we'll see how it goes. And please listen to Audible Interlude if you'd like to hear more uh, thoughts about Major Blood and the state of the G.I. Joe Classified series. But for now, we're going to take our trusty 1964 box cutter, slice right through that piece of tape, and get Flynn out of this box and see what's going on with this figure. I always love the fact that there's no tape in these, they have designed everything to fit snugly into the tray. Just a, th probably the best packaging in toys right now. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I think it's fantastic packaging. So, Flint himself. Uh, the face, I don't know, it's interesting because it's not old, it's not young. I like the scars Personally, I know some people didn't care for it, but I think it's something different. I think it adds personality or adds character. Uh, looks good. I like the hair. The hair looks great. I think they did a really good job with that. Uh, you know, I don't know the, the high fade. I, I don't know exactly what this hairstyle is. I'm not sure how I feel about the little rat taily portion hanging. That's not really a rat tail, but you know what I mean? Just hanging down back there. It's a little weird, but uh, he looks good. They have captured the look of the classic Flint figure. Uh, you know, he's got the the straps with the ammo here. 
added the pouches here and the black, you know, this on the old figure, this is just his shirt, but now this is, uh, this is actually like an armor plate, which makes sense because you want to protect those vital organs. But the sculpt here looks great. Uh, you know, those pouches go all the way around. And we've got a big uh, holster. I guess that'd be a holster for his shotgun on the back. Curious to see how that goes in there. It looks like it goes that way. I believe. I think that's correct. That's going to be... How do you draw that? I don't know, but it looks cool, so we're not going to worry about it. I just... That's weird. How would you... I'm, I'm, I'm going to... That that would be extremely difficult to quickly draw. Uh, maybe this is a real thing, though. I don't know. I am not a tactical weapons person, so I'm not sure. It just seems to me like it would make more sense if this was up here. Uh, so do the old uh, Ash Evil Dead over-the-shoulder draw. I don't know. Maybe that would be difficult, too. Uh, but anyway, it looks good. The paint's great. I like the armor plating with the green trim here. Uh, it's, of course, got the butterfly shoulders. I'm not going to waste too much of your time on the articulation here because we've done a ton of these figures at this point. Please go back and watch the other G.I. Joe Classified Series unboxing videos here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. And like, subscribe, and share while you're at it. Uh, the camo on his pants is okay. I would maybe like a little more... I don't know, may, maybe a darker brown, or not a darker brown, but like brown here. Because as is, he needs... I, brown would be great, because he's got the brown belt, he's got the brown boots, which look really good, by the way. I like these brown boots with the armor plate in the front. Uh, knee pads look cool. I wish this camo was brown. I, I would make that change, because I think that would just color him up just a little bit more. Because as it is, the the dark, just sort of the black camo, uh, it's fine, but it's not great. And then, of course, he's got his uh, holster down here with his Nerf gun. Nerf guns don't bother me with this line, by the way. This is, G.I. Joe to me is a sci-fi military concept. Uh, so I don't mind them having not realistic guns. That's fine. I mean, it is it is a toy property marketed to children, you know, we don't, I, I don't necessarily need them to be completely realistic weapons all the time. And I like it when they do it, but like, look at that. That's fine. That's a fine pistol. There's nothing wrong with that pistol and it fits in his hand. Great. Look at that. Looks really good. Uh, the, the interactivity of the figures and the accessories in this line is one of my favorite things so far because all of all the weapons have a place where they go. They fit in the hands great. They look good. Uh, we've got this little blue deal that is just part of the look of these Joes. And I like that there's something that unifies them like that because we don't need the gold, you know, shin guards and everything. And I, I don't hate those, but we don't need that on all of the figures. But I do like having some kind of little unifying piece and this, uh, this blue is just a little splash of color that's on all the Joes. And uh, I dig it. I like it. So he looks good. They've done a good job of updating Flint. Uh, they, you know, and the camo is not bad. It's just, I think, a different color would have been kind of cool in here. Just to give him one more little bit of interesting detail. Uh, he's got his beret. As we know, we all love beret Joes. Beret wearing Joes. Looks excellent on. Uh, again, the interactivity of the accessories and the figures is perfect in this line. And with the beret on, I think he looks a little more flinty. That makes his profile more, I mean, obviously, because Flint wears a beret, but I, I, putting that on top of that face makes him a lot more Flint-like to me. I think it's, uh, it's a great look. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at the shotgun. Got the shells uh, on one side. Got some paint here. Uh, more paint than we've seen on some of the recent weapons, which hopefully is a good sign. Uh, 
you can't go back and forth. You can't put out some weapons that have no paint whatsoever and then put out weapons that have painted detail. You, you can't, you, you got to do one or the other. And if it's going to be one or the other, I'd rather it be the painted detail. Uh, that opens up for a little access there. Just kind of a neat feature. No real reason to, to have done that. It's not like the shells come out. This is not a Mezco 112 collected figure. Uh, nor should it be compared to that line. Because the price difference is astronomical. Uh, and we got... Right in front of you, good old Dashiel. Dashiel? Dashiel, I think. Flint. One of the field commanders of the G.I. Joe team... I think he looks great. This is, I would say, the progression of the G.I. Joe classified series. We're seeing that this is kind of a middle step to this line being perfect, if that makes sense. And don't get me wrong, it is a great figure. I'm happy with it. I think he's really, really well done. But I can see, you know, sort of yet another step in this line to where they keep making them better and better and better. And we really get, you know, not reproductions of the 80s figures, because I don't want that, but the perfect updates that we do want. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Remember to check out Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast, and come back on Wednesday for Lady J. Yo, Joe!